place this proposal in a broader context and present some specific concerns related to general TC. Historically, I have personal knowledge of a proposed general TC for Richmond High in the 1980s being rejected by large segments of the community and the school board. Also, in the 1980s, members of the community expressed concern about military recruiters' unregulated presence on high school grounds, and the board adopted a policy that recruiters could participate in career days and college fairs along with providing for an alternative viewpoint. As for the broader context, we refer to our chapter's endorsement along with about 90 other organizations of the Bayer Campaign for New Priorities, the regional body, Peace Action West, to which we are affiliated, is also an endorser. They, in turn, are affiliated to National Peace Action, which is a participant in the National Network for New Priorities. Pertinent to this discussion, are two of the points included in the campaign's endorsing principle. First, cut the Pentagon budget to meet our domestic needs. And, excuse me. And second, invest in people, communities, infrastructure, and environment to create jobs. We have long questioned the United States military spending as described by this poster, which illustrates last year's federal discretionary budget. Congress votes on these priorities every year. It does not include mandates such as Social Security and Medicare. In 2012, the campaign focused on city council resolutions that support new priorities. Richmond, El Cerrito, and San Pablo Councils unanimously adopted similar resolutions that issued a call to, and I quote, substantially reduce overall military spending and redirect our federal tax dollars to depressing educational, employment, health, housing, nutritional, infrastructure, energy, and environmental needs of our city, state, and country. We see the proposal for a JOTC as incompatible with your fellow elected officials' positions and departing from the policies of past district school boards. Before I address specific issues regarding JOTC, my fellow chapter board member will describe our informal polling of community members on their federal spending priorities. Good evening. My name is Milton Jan Vanbridge, and I'm a resident of El Cerrito. Our chapter regularly has a booth at the annual street fairs, such as El Sobrante Stroll. Stroll. Periodically, we use the Penny Bowl, where we offer participants 10 pennies from our supply and ask them to pretend it's their federal income tax. That's what funds the discretionary budget. We ask them to spend it in five jars, each with a different label, namely health care, housing, education, clean energy, and military. We've also used the bowl with displays we've had at a number of local high schools during college fairs or career days. Starting in 2009, we have tabulated the results and almost always Education has the most, and military has the least. Since Ganza is near El Cervante, I'd like to highlight some of the results. In 2010, we pulled 70 people, and education got 210, while the military got 33. In 2013, we pulled 112 people, and military got 100 but education got 422, better than a 4 to 1 ratio. We chose the category based on what this graph tells us. 
Per federal dollar spent, education creates the most jobs and military creates the least. A 2014 study titled Economic Con Conversion from Military Addiction to Economic Sustainability includes a citation from 2011 indicating, I quote, investing in schools creates more than twice as many jobs as military spending. In the background information we supplied to you was an excerpt from Project Sensor's May 3, 2010 report on the Pentagon's child recruiting strategy. Before I cite some details, we along with National Peace Action and Peace Action West consider JROTC a military recruitment mechanism. The 2010 project report by Project Sensor quotes former U.S. Secretary of Defense William Cohen, who describes the pro program, and I quote, one of the best recruitment programs we can have. It further states that true enough, 40% of those entering the program go on to enlist. Pertinent to this observation is a U.N. protocol signed and ratified by the United States in 2002, under which we pledge not to recruit children under 17 participate in armed conflict. We note that the proposed JROTC in Canada will be under the wing of the Air Force. The Executive Director of National Peace Action tells me that the Air Force is now training more drone pilots than airplane pilots. Since the U.S. military now uses drones for a significant amount of their killing, we see JROTC as a violation of the spirit, if not the letter, of this law. With high unemployment rates, particularly in communities of color and other disadvantaged communities, we recognize that parents may see the military as an alternative to the criminal justice system and prison for their youth. We see this as a sad commentary on society's priorities and the consequence of budget that don't meet urgent social needs. In conclusion, we urge you to advise the principal of the effort to seek less controversial and more constructive avenues to address the needs of the students. Thank you for your attention and consideration.